Getting the right temperature is one of the most important factors when it comes to brewing a delicious cup of tea. But what temperature works best? That all depends on what type of tea you're brewing. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at why temperature matters and what temperature you can use for each type of tea. Before we get started, it would really mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for future tea videos. We have hundreds of videos on all sorts of topics related to Japanese green tea, but for this episode, we're going to focus on brewing temperature specifically. Without further ado, let's get started. So to start off, why is temperature important when it comes to tea? On each pack of tea, you will find brewing instructions. Following these instructions is like following a recipe. The temperature, time, and ratio will determine the ingredients in your cup of tea. With the exception of matcha, which is a powdered tea mixed directly into water, tea is made by infusing tea leaves into water. Some compounds of the tea leaf are extracted by the water and the rest stays inside the leaf. Hotter water and longer brewing times will extract more from the leaf and shorter brewing times and lower temperature water will extract less. The reason you may not want to extract everything from the tea leaf is because it can create a bitter flavor in your tea. Catechins, for example, are the more bitter components within the tea leaf. Fortunately, these are extracted at higher temperatures and at longer brewing times. This is why you're able to produce a sweeter cup of tea if you use a shorter brewing or a lower temperature. You may notice if you leave your tea brewing for too long, it will be incredibly bitter. This is precisely because of the catechins, and it's something that you will definitely want to avoid. The bitter flavors can quickly overtake the taste of the tea, and if you want to really appreciate the nuanced tasting notes, you'll want to stick to the brewing parameters on the package. In the rest of this video, we will go through each tea in order of temperature to explain why it works best for each. First, we have cold brewed green teas. While this is not normally recommended on the packs of the teas, we have found that Japanese green teas in particular work exceptionally well as a cold brew. When we say cold brew, we mean room temperature or cold water. This lower temperature water extracts a lot of the sweet and fruity flavors of the tea without extracting the bitterness. To cold brew tea, all you need to do is add five grams of leaves to a pitcher and fill it up with 500 milliliters of cool water. You can then let the tea sit undisturbed for three to eight hours. At this lower temperature, you can brew the tea for a much longer time without it becoming too bitter. We find that three hours is the sweet spot for getting that smooth and rich flavor, but you can also brew it overnight if you prefer. If you leave the tea brewing for too much longer than eight hours, you'll start to extract some of the bitterness. Next, we have warm water brewing, starting with a temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This may seem very low, but it actually works perfectly for a few different types of Japanese green teas. Green teas have the highest content of catechins, so they are the most sensitive to temperature. If you brew these teas with boiling water, or even at a temperature of 180 degrees, they will become incredibly bitter. What you want to do is stick to lower temperatures, particularly with Japanese green teas. One type of green tea that is notoriously sensitive to temperature is gyokuro. This is the so-called emperor's tea, and it's best prepared at this 140 degree temperature. Gyokuro is a celebration of these unique, sweet and savory flavors. These unique flavors are the result of a long, labor-intensive cultivation and production process, and in order to respect all the hard work of the farmer, you should prepare the tea according to the guidelines. You can use 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius and a brewing time of 2 minutes. The reason you brew the tea for longer is because gyokuro is tightly rolled into these needle-shaped leaves. In order for these leaves to expand and fully release their flavor into the water, they will need to soak for a full 2 minutes. The other teas we recommend brewing at a lower temperature are Fukumushi Sencha teas. What makes Japanese green teas unique is that they are steamed after the harvest. Fukumushi Sencha teas are steamed for an even longer time, and during that time, the cell membranes of the leaf are broken down, allowing more of them to flow into the cup. This is why you get this vibrant, cloudy green color and rich, full-bodied flavor. The steaming also makes the leaves more brittle, which causes them to break down into these smaller pieces. These smaller leaf particles have more relative surface area, and therefore they infuse more quickly into the water. This is why you may want to use lower temperature water, like 140 degrees, and a shorter brewing time of 45 seconds. This should be more than enough time to extract a lot of flavor, particularly for a tea like Fukumushi Sencha. Next, we have 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. This is considered to be the standard temperature for a lot of Japanese green teas. Most Japanese green teas, with the exception of gyokuro, should work pretty well at this temperature. It works particularly well for a typical sencha tea, the most common type of tea in Japan. This is simply a green tea made from the young leaves of the tea plant that have been steamed, rolled, and dried. Sencha tea has a vast array of different flavors, including sweet, fruity, floral, vegetal, earthy, citrusy, and dry. The citrusy or dry flavors are brought out at a slightly higher temperature, and some tea drinkers really enjoy them. This is why you may prefer brewing normal sencha at 70 degrees Celsius instead of 60 degrees. 
Matcha also works well at this temperature. It's less sensitive to temperature because instead of extracting the tea leaves, you're just mixing them directly into water. So you get the same components either way. That being said, the powder still kind of brews in the water. So if you go too high, it will become bitter. Next, we come to 80 degrees Celsius, which works great for some of the hardier Japanese green teas. These include hojicha, bancha, genmaicha, and kukicha. Each of these teas can withstand higher temperatures and for different reasons. Hojicha is made from roasted tea leaves. During the roasting process, a lot of the catechins are removed from the leaf, and therefore the tea tends to not get the same bitter flavor, even at higher temperatures. The hotter water brings out warmer, roasted flavors that the tea has become famous for. This tea is the perfect cup to enjoy on a cold winter afternoon. Bancha is made from the older, more mature leaves of the tea plant. These leaves are more resistant to temperature, so you can brew the tea with slightly hotter water. The tea takes on milder flavors, with a hint of wood and citrus. The tea is also high in minerals and low in caffeine, making it perfect for the evening time. Genmaicha tends to be made from bancha leaves mixed with toasted rice. The toasted rice imparts a nice warm cereal flavor into the tea and also lowers the caffeine content even further. This is a very popular tea amongst beginners, and it's a good thing that it's so forgiving when it comes to temperature and brewing time. Finally, kukicha is a tea made from both the stems and the leaves of the tea plant. The stems are more resistant to temperature, and they also give a nice floral or hay flavor to the tea. Stems contain one-third the amount of caffeines compared to the leaves, which makes kukicha another low-caffeine green tea. You may notice that all the teas mentioned up until now are green teas. Green teas are unoxidized, which separates them from black teas, which are fully oxidized, and oolong teas, which are partially oxidized. During the oxidation process, the catechins in the tea leaf are converted into theoflavins and theorubigans. This makes oxidized teas more resistant to hot water, allowing them to stand up to higher temperatures without getting overpowered with bitterness. When it comes to oolong tea, the best temperature is somewhere in between 190 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And for black tea, you can go for a full boil. While it is rare in Japan to find a tea that is not a green tea, there are actually a few great oolong teas being produced here. The Miyazaki Sabu Oolong, for example, can stand up to higher temperatures and it has a wonderful flowery flavor to it. This is quite unique compared to Oolong teas coming from China and Japan and definitely something you should try at least once. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you find it helpful the next time you brew a pot of tea. If you're interested in trying any of the teas mentioned in the video, you can find them on our website, neoteas.com. After traveling around Japan for the past few years, we have met with dozens of farmers and sampled hundreds of different types of green teas. We've selected a small handful of our favorites, and we'd like to share them with all of you. When you order a tea from us, you're not only helping to support this YouTube channel, you're also helping us to support the dozens of talented farmers we work with all around Japan. We believe that by sharing quality, sustainable green tea with people all around the world, we can transition the tea industry into a more positive direction. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions about tea brewing or green tea in general, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.